We're going to be looking at this video at algebra and a lot of the stuff we have covered already last year in our M4 and M8. So the first thing we're going to look at is factorizing and that we're going to be using the sum and product method. The first question here, it says factorize 3x squared plus 8xy minus 11y squared. Now this is actually one of the more difficult ones. So I'm just going to jump and have a look at a slightly easier example of, it, of this type. Okay, so I've just taken out the y's here. So instead of uh, 3x squared plus 8xy minus 11y squared. I've got rid of the y, so the y's gone and the y squared has gone. We're going to look at just our sum and product here. And it's a good idea to do this just if you see a more complicated version, just compare it to something that you do know. So first thing a sum and product method is we need to write down what our sum is. So our sum is going to be equal to, our sum, sorry, is going to be equal to 8, because uh, your sum is just the, the number or the coefficient of the x term so in here it is it is just 8 and the plus is important so it's plus 8 if that had been a minus then it would be minus 8 here okay the next thing is your product so we'll just write p for product and how you get your product it's this this term is coefficient times this coefficient so it's 3 times minus 11 so it is minus 33 so what we've got to do is we've got to find two numbers such that they add to give 8 and they multiply to give minus 11. Having the clue. So we're going to have a look through this. And what you do is you work with the product. So the product was minus 33 and you look at all the different ways that we can get minus 33 by multiplying two numbers. So the first one I'm going to do is minus 1 times 33. And if you add minus 1 and 33, you get uh, 30. Sorry, if you add minus 1 and 33, you get 32 which is not equal to our 8, so that's not going to be right. So the next one you can do is going to be just minus 3, and then times 11. And if you add minus 3 and minus 11, you get 8, which is what you want. So the way I set it out is do a curly bracket to show my two numbers are minus 3 and minus 3 and 11. Okay, so that means what all the sum of product method does, it allows you a different way to write this original expression so this original expression now becomes 3x squared minus 3x plus 11x minus 11 uh, and now this thing you can now factorize in a very uh, special way so here what we're going to do is we're going to look at our first two terms so when i say the first two terms i mean the 3x squared minus the 3x and we want to factorize that completely so that means you take out everything that you can take out so here x come, definitely comes out of these two terms but 3 also comes out so you really need to take out 3x so if you just just taken out the x or you just taken out the 3 you would be getting this wrong so we're going to factorize the first two terms completely so as i said i could take out a 3x and that leaves me with x minus 1 okay and then over here i'm going to factorize the next two terms completely so i have 11x minus 11 so what i can take out here is 11 so i'm just going to be left with 11 upon x minus 1. Now you should uh, know that you're right because you've got what's called a common bracket. You've got 3x, sorry, you've got x minus 1 in this bracket and you've x minus 1 in this bracket. So the next step is just write down your common bracket so it was x minus 1 and then put another bracket. So what we have up above is x minus 1 is multiplying 3x. So in here you have to have x minus 1 multiplying. 3x and sorry and then you've also got your x minus 1 multiplying the 11 so just put that in that's x minus 1 multiplying the 11 and it's a plus 11 remember and that is it factorized so we have x minus 1 upon 3x plus 11 if you multiply this line out you would it would take you back to the original thing so you could do that to prove that to yourself as well Okay, so if we go back to our original example, and we're just going to uh, use what we've just learned from the easier, easier version of this. So here, our sum is just the coefficient of the x, so that would meant the thing that was multiplying the x. So what's multiplying the x is you have a plus 8, and you have a y. So your coefficient of your x really is 8y. Your product was the coefficient of the thing multiplying the x squared times the coefficient of whatever is on the end here so it's 3 times minus 11 y squared so it's minus 33 y squared so 
Uh, we have to find two things, such that they multiply to give minus 33y squared, and they add to give 8y. So the first thing I'm going to try is minus y times minus, sorry, minus y times uh, plus 33. I'll just change that there, plus there, plus 33y, and that doesn't work. Then I'll try minus 3y times 11y, and if we add those together, you get 8y. So my two things are minus 3y and 11y. So that means we can rewrite the original equation as 3x squared, and then we had minus 3y times the x, so I'll just write that as minus 3xy, and then we had 11y times the x, I'll write that as plus 11xy, and then minus 11y squared. So what we want to do then is just factorize the first two terms completely. So what you can do is pull out a 3x, that leaves you with x minus y. And then I want to factorize my next two terms completely. So what I could do is pull out a plus 11y. And if you pull out plus 11y, you're left with just x minus y. And then what you have left, you've got your, write down your common bracket. So it was x minus y. And the x minus y is multiplying 3x. And the x minus y is multiplying plus 11y. So that's what you put in this bracket, 3x plus 11y. And that's you done. Okay, this next example is a wee bit different. It is a cubic. So the first thing you would see here is you could pull an x outside. So x comes outside, leaves you 3x squared minus 10x plus 8. And then we have to do the sum and product for this thing. So inside this, our sum is going to be equal to minus 10, because that's the coefficient of the x. Our product is a 3 times the plus 8. So it is going to be 3, ta uh, 3 times 8, which is 24. So we've got to go through 24 and see all the different ways we can get it. So if we do 1 times 24, that's going to give, add those two, you're going to get 25. You're going to do 2 times uh, two times 12, add those, that's not going to work for us. Uh, 3 times 8 and 4 times 6. Okay, right. Now look at these. None of these will work and there's no chance they will ever work because if you add 1 and 24, you're going to get 25. 2 and 12, you're going to get uh, 2 and 12, sorry, you're going to get um, 14, 3 and 8, you're going to get 11, and so on. You're never going to get a negative number that we need. So we've got to think of another way of doing this. So 24, the other way of do, getting a positive product is doing a negative times a negative. So let's see what we can, if we change these all to negative, see if we can, this will help us out any at all. So uh, we do minus 1 times minus 24, that's minus 25. Sorry, minus 1 times minus 24. When you add those, uh, you minus 1 plus minus 24 would be minus 25. Minus 2 plus minus 12 would be minus 14. Minus 3 plus minus 8 would be minus 11. And minus 4 plus minus 6 would give you minus 10. So our, our two numbers are minus 4 and minus 6. So that becomes min uh, minus 4 and minus 6 are the numbers that work. Okay. We're going down here. You've still got the x outside. Inside then, however, we're going to change our middle term. It's 3x squared minus 4x minus 6x plus 8. And then we want to go ahead and inside this x is still here. And we want to factorize these first two terms here. So x can pull outside, leaving you 3x minus 4. And over here, and just be careful with this. Minus 2 can come outside here, so minus 2, leaving you 3x minus 4. That might take a wee bit of playing around with. Uh, quite often people put in a 2 to start with, I take, pull out a 2 here. Uh, but if you pull out 2, it will leave you minus 3x plus, plus 4. So notice you would not have common brackets. So you might, might have to play around with it just to make sure the, common, the brackets are the same. You have the common brackets. Okay, going on down, we still have got... We still have got your x term outside, multiplying everything. I'll just do a big bracket for this. And I'm going to write down my common bracket. So my common bracket was the 3x minus 4. And then it, it was multiplying x. And it was also multiplying the minus 2. So x minus 2. And then we can get rid of that big bracket there. That's x upon 3x minus 4 upon x minus 2. 
Okay, so in this example, what we want to do is we want to multiply everything here by x. So you times everything by x. So if you do that, you're going to get x squared plus 5x is equal to 6 over x times x just gives you 6. It's now quadratic, but we bring it all to one side and put it equal to 0. And then we can factorize this. So this, you can use your sum and product to, uh, to factorize this one. Your sum is equal to 5. Your product is equal to minus 6. So minus 6 is equal to 6 times minus 1, and 6 and minus 1 add to give a 5, so we're good to go. So you rewrite your quadratic equation as x squared plus 6x minus x minus 6 is equal to 0. And factorize the first two terms, that's x plus 6. Factorize the second two terms, that's x upon, minus x sorry, upon x plus 6. You know you're right because you've got a common bracket of x plus 6. So write down your common bracket, x plus 6 upon x. Oh, that, sorry, that should have been a minus 1 comes outside there. And that's x minus 1. So you know you're right, you've got a common bracket. And then you're in this lovely stage, in lovely situation mathematically, you have a times b equals 0, which means a is equal to 0, or b is equal to 0. So here, x plus 6 equals 0 or x minus 1 is equal to 0, which means x is equal to minus 6, or x is equal to 1. Okay, okay. in this one, I, it will not factorize using the sum and product method, so I'm just going to show you why that is, first of all, and then we're going to go on and have to use the quadratic formula. So first of all, in this one, our sum is equal to minus 5. Your product would be 2 times minus 11, so minus 22. And if you just go through that very quickly, uh, minus 11 would be minus 1 times 22. It would be minus 2 times 11. It would be 1 times minus 22. It would be 2 times minus 11. And none of those work. So none of those uh, numbers, minus 1 and 11, don't add to give minus 5. 2, minus 2 and 11 don't add to give minus 5. 1 and minus 22 don't add to give minus 5. And 2 and minus 11 don't add to give minus 5. So here, you can't factorize it basically. So what you must do is use your quadratic formula. So we're going to use the fact that x is equal to minus b plus or minus b squared minus 4ac. It's a square root of that bit on the top line and it's all being divided by 2a. Okay, what a I'm talking about here, a is a coefficient of your x squared, b is a coefficient of your x, and c is a coefficient of your x to the power of zero term, or as we've called it so far, the numerical term. So in this case, good idea just to write down what your things are. So here, a equals 2, b equals minus 5, and that's very important. Your c is equal to minus 11, and that is very important as well. So we're just going to fire that into the quadratic formula. So it was minus b, so minus minus 5 will be just plus 5, plus or minus, the square root of and use brackets here please. It's b squared, but write that as minus 5 squared. And the reason you need to write it that way is because if you, if you put it into your calculator, if you just hit minus 5 squared, it would come out, out incorrectly in your calculator as minus 25. So to do this in your calculator, you've got to put in brackets, minus 5, close your bracket, and then squared to give you the right answer. Then minus 4, and again I've just put this in a bracket, my a was 2, my c was minus 11 all divided by 2 times my a, and my a was 2. Okay, uh, bottom line is easy, it's just going to be 4, that's just going to be 5 plus or minus, and this bit, I would work this bit out on my calculator, so as I said earlier, you do brackets minus 5, close your bracket, squared, then minus 4, bracket 2, close your bracket, bracket minus 11, close your bracket. So work out what that is inside that square root, and I've done it, and it worked out as 113. So here, one of my x values, so I box that off there, one of my x values is going to be 5 plus the square root of 113, all divided by 4. And the other one is going to be 5 minus the square root of 113, all over 4. So when you do this, I've got 3.91, and that was two, two decimal places. And I've also got uh, the other one, the negative one would be 
minus 1.41 and that was also to two decimal places. Okay, you're now ready to do your algebra and equations. I think it's called algebra and equations questions. Exercise 2a and just have a look at the odds are fairly straightforward and exercise 2b and again the odds there.